Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now, Alexander Usyk, the boxing legend, the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. There's only been a couple of those. And he's got three belts in the heavyweight division. And he's looking for number four. Right? Now, why I says he's legend already, Hall of Famer already? Because he ain't fought at home. He's not even trying to fight at home. He's going to fight wherever the hell his opponent wants to fight. Now, for those that don't think that's legendary, name me a fighter that's like that right now, presently. I only know a few. I ain't going to mention the names because they actually most of them that are like that or in my Negro League fighters, right? Matter of fact, I don't know what one Negro League fighter that I call Negro League fighters where a champion is calling him out. Not one. So, you know, most of these Negro League fighters will go to wherever you want to fight to. You think you got a problem with Luis Ortiz going wherever you want to fight? You got a problem with Deontay Wilder going wherever you want to fight? You got a problem with Michael Hunter going wherever you want to fight? You got a problem with Demetrius Andre going wherever you want to fight? You got a problem with Devin Haney going wherever you want to fight? You got a problem with them, uh, David Morrell going wherever you want to fight. You got a problem with uh, who else? Guillermo Rigondeau going to wherever you want to fight. You got a problem with Terrence Crawford going wherever you want to fight. Not really, do you? That's the guys in boxing. Negro League fighters, they'll go everywhere. But Alex Alexander Ulsik has already done that. Became undisputed, never going home. Baddest dude out there, in my opinion. Period. I'm talking about the dudes he bought, beat away from home, all ridiculously awesome. Ain't too many people in Cruiserweight better than uh, Marco Hook. That's a legend in Cruiserweight, right? Ain't too many people right now better than uh, Morris Brightus. Right now, probably the baddest Cruiserweight. He got beat in Latvia. Ain't too many people better than Morris uh, Gassiev at the time, hardest puncher in Cruiserweight at the time. He got beat at his home in, in Russia, right? Wasn't too many people better than Tony Bellew, right? After Bellew beat David Hay, he got beat right in his hometown in Manchester, Liverpool, one of them, right? And before the tournament started, he beat up Glavaki in Poland when Glavaki was undefeated. Before that, he beat Michael Hunter in the States. You know, dude, I mean, Chizur got beat and Anthony Joshua got beat in England. The dude don't go home when he beats everybody. And that's so awesome because you got to beat everybody as bad enough to where the, their home fans and the judges go get you to fight. Look how we treat Canelo. We know Canelo is going to be, if he don't get knocked out, is he going to lose if he don't get knocked out? I'm pretty sure the judges in his last fight against Kyler Plant had him up. I know in round nine, Steve Farhood had Canelo up seven rounds to two. And it had to be the other way around, seven rounds to two for Plant. So we know what time it is. You know what I'm saying? This is a crazy boxer. So. He beat Anthony Joshua, and what he's saying now is Anthony Joshua, it don't matter if you change a trainer or not. We all know Anthony Joshua's been going around uh, not really looking for other trainers because Anthony Joshua's made it clear. It's not necessary to, to uh, you know, to take McCracken and get him out of there and switch trainers. It's not about that. It's just about new information and going around to gather information, and he might train with somebody in the meantime because McCracken is in Lithuania somewhere. Right now, right? So, you know, I think that Joshua was doing the right thing. Go get some information, new, new input right now, you know. Break up the monotony. That ain't nothing wrong with Joshua going to handle his business to try to figure out how to win the second fight, just like he did against Ruiz. He was like, you know what? I stand in the pocket. I was over there thinking I was going to knock him out, and that left hook messed up my equilibrium, and I never got it back. So, therefore, I'm, you know, I'm going to outbox the dude in the second fight. Whatever. You know, people, oh, he ran, he did this, he ain't ran, man, whatever. Vladimir Klitschko fought like that the whole time. The GOAT, in my opinion, Lennox Lewis, had to fight sometime like that. You know what I'm saying? After he got clocked by my boy Rockman, he was like, okay, I might jab, jab, grab you for a minute. But the only difference with Lewis is when, when I grab you, you might get this uppercut. Ask, ask Grant. What was his name? Michael Grant? Yeah, Michael Grant. That uppercut. <laughs> so, you know, things can happen. But that's Lennox Lewis. That's, that's, that's the GOAT type stuff. Bottom line is this. Alexander Uzzik don't give a damn what Anthony Joshua do. And viewing from what he has done up until now, why would he? Somebody going to have to show that this is, you know, you know, do something to him. 
His promoter said he don't care at all either. Now, it's word that people are like, well, he's going to not want to fight uh, Tyson Fury because he's just too big. Well, normally, we would probably be right because we all know, people that you know are into boxing knows, if you got two skilled fighters, probably the bigger one is going to win. You know, that's just you know old saying in boxing. Most of the time, that's the case. But this, most of the time, fighters are fighting at home too, aren't they? At least half of their fights, and especially if they can, right? So this is an anomaly. This is something different. This is a whole different kind of heart. This is a whole different kind of dude here. He would rather come to your house to beat you up. So with that being said, I don't give a damn what normally happens, right? I know that Alexander Uzik is trying to be undisputed. And if the other guy is whatever, if he's of the human species, Alexander Uzik is going to want that other belt. He's not going to be in the division letting somebody else say that they're champions. Right? That's not going to happen with Alexander Uzik. And I will say in other videos, it's refreshing. It's a breath of fresh air. This is what we all want from champions. This is all what we want. So we got it. So fathom it. Right? Give the man the respect. And if not, see if your fighter does anything similar. Probably doesn't. So when you got something like that, enjoy it. Hell yeah, he don't give a damn about, uh, well, hell no, he don't care what Anthony Joshua what kind of trainer he is. But hell yeah, he's going to fight Tyson Fury for Undisputed if he beat Anthony Joshua. First of all, let's make sure this is clear. Anthony Joshua wasn't supposed to get a rematch clause, right? Alexander Uzik was his mandatory. Mandatories don't have to make a rematch clause, but he didn't give a damn. Okay, I'll get two paydays and I'll beat Joshua up twice before I go get Undisputed. Who the hell does that? That's the point here. Alexander Uzik, baby, period. Ukraine bring the pain, and it's plain. Alexander Uzik, yeah, I'm going to fight uh, your boy, uh, Anthony Joshua. What, who gives a damn what trainer? And if I beat him, I'm going after Tyson Fury if he's still got the damn belt. It's pretty simple. That's Alexander Uzik. Doma Sports Talk Worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.